activate. This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. Like these Jewish accusers, they usually talk in generalizations like, why does God allow so much suffering in the world if he is the God of love? Very general, ambiguous type questions. Or why would God send the heathen to hell if he didn't, if they don't even know about him? Why wouldn't he give them a chance? The implication behind those questions often is that God is criminal and unjust. Uh, he is, in other words, they're, they're, those questions imply that Jesus is guilty or that God is guilty. So why is there suffering in the world? Why would God allow that? It implies that God is, a, is the criminal. And they're actually, they're actually handled this the same way that these Jews were handling it. They were, hey, trust us. If there wasn't a problem, I wouldn't bring it up. But now that you bring it up, why would God allow this sort of thing to happen? It's a strange way to look at God, really. Because this, what they were saying was in response to uh, what they perceived as man's suffering because Jesus had entered the world. They were suffering. In other words, they, they felt that they were being challenged and they couldn't really be who they were supposed to be because of what Jesus had done and what he had said. And in today's world, it's very much the same. Man responds to God, uh, indicating that it is because of God that man suffers. It was in response to uh, the threat. Think about this. While man says, why would God allow such suffering in the world? It is that exact suffering that was the reason that Jesus came into the world. So that whoever would believe on him would not perish, but have everlasting life. So it was the very thing that they were accusing God of that was the reason God came to earth. That's true then. It was true then. It is true now. The very same reason. Jesus left heaven to suffer and die for the salvation of those who need God. If an accusation should be made, it should be made against man for rebelling against God. And in the first place, in causing such poverty and causing such suffering in the world. I mean, think about it. When you look at all the, 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 the issues in the world today, the suffering, the, the, what's going the poverty in the world today, is that something that God caused or something that man caused? So... It, it's, I'm amazed that, that people make these accusations against God when those things that they're talking about are the very reason that God sent Jesus into the world. We don't blame man, and Lord knows we don't, we don't blame the devil for inciting man's rebellion and seeking the destruction of mankind. There's, if you want to cast the accusations, how about that accusation? There are no valid accusations against Christ that the Jews were making none. No valid accusations against him. That didn't stop them. In today's world, it's the same thing. There are no valid accusations against Jesus, against God, but people still make them. He is full of grace and truth. He is righteous in every way. We may not always understand his ways, but his ways are higher than ours, and he has come that we might get the most out of life. In fact, he said, that's why I'm here. He says it in John 10, 10. The thief comes to steal and destroy all of those things. Nobody, nobody blames the thief. Oh, there's so much poverty and everything that's going, all the destruction and evil in the world. You know, you're not going to blame the thief? You want to blame God for that? If God was God, why would he allow there to be thieving in the world? Well, how about blaming the thief? Jesus said, the thief comes to destroy, to kill and destroy, but I come that you might have life and have it abundantly. On behalf 